I was fairly outspoken at the start of the IPL because you didn't want to, um, as a professional, be uh, one step behind the pacemakers. And the pacemakers of the game at that stage were that was uh, the Indian Premier League. You could learn from the greats of the game and you could understand how they practiced, how they spoke, how they approached games, how they were in team meetings, how thorough they were, how meticulous they were in everything that they did from how they padded up to what they talked about before they went and batted. People are not stupid, the owners of the franchises are not dumb, they don't just say oh, I'm going to give you a million bucks because you just look like a cool dude. You warranted your price tag because of how good you were and that gave you a lot of confidence uh, and, and gave you some sort of stature in the game. It came with added responsibility and extra pressures because the announcer announces you onto the field and it's normally walking out to bat at Lords. Good afternoon everybody and uh, the next batsman for England is number four Kevin Peterson and it's just like oh, boo or cheers or whatever. However you walk in there and they go and poof, the music's banging, everybody's shouting and jumping and walking in for number three RCB is the world's most expensive buy in the IPL auction. You're there and they go, jeez, okay, 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 right, you've got to take a, you're not just walking out at Lords or the MCG or in Barbados as England's number four. You're now the, the, that, that iconic player. Being able to have Anil Kumble, Dale Stain, Mark Boucher, Raul Dravid, just to name a few, a young Virat Kohli, was something that uh, as a foreign player you just put your hands together and you lick your lips and you say, right guys, let's go out and go and do the business. There's not much talking that you need to do. You just have to try and strategically position players in certain places and keep all those guys happy. I just remember batting with the likes of Sevag and I mean that was quite an eye-opener. Just the careless free spirit that he is and he sings when the bowlers are running up to bowl to him and he just goes ponga, pinga, pango, just whacks it all over the place and um, some of the most fun experiences in the cricket field with, were with Verenda Sevag, just a superstar man. Sitting on the bus with Virat and batting with Virat, uh, I knew that he was destined for greatness because of the way that he approach the game, the way that he learned, the questions that he asked. Uh, he was a chubby little fella uh, in 2008, 2009, 2010 and I still take the mickey out of him for it. But his determination to be the best player he could possibly be was evident. I was winning the game for us against um, uh, Rajasthan Rules in uh, Rajasthan, in Jaipur and uh, he ran me out and I gave him an absolute serve walking off the field. Um, but you could see that was that, that, uh, that youngster who was destined and determined to get his team over the line and he wasn't just going to give his wicket away and it didn't matter how many test matches I was, I'd played or how more, much more senior in the game that I was. I mean we, we do have a, an incredible friendship because of uh, uh, I think maybe the way that I treated him when he was a youngster and, and, and helped him uh, and guarded him at the start of his career. In India, as a cricketer, it's very difficult to go and walk the streets. Cricket's a religion and you are worshipped in that country, so what you end up doing is spending so much time on your team floor, with your teammates, eating together, uh, playing FIFA together, practicing together, travelling together, playing together, you're just with each other. You're very emotionally attached to your team. I think that's what got me into a lot of trouble as well in, uh, with the ECB. I, came, I was being pulled back after a couple of weeks with India uh, in the IPL, coming back and I was having one eye on the test match, yet if uh, my team were playing on that day, I was really into it. I was like, right Delhi, come on, come on, come on. Nothing compares to the IPL in India. Uh, every single friend of mine that talks about, oh, I'd love to come and watch a game in India, I say, don't talk about it, just do it. There is nothing more spectacular, nothing more gripping, nothing more captivating, and there is no greater entertainment in the game than coming to watch a bumping Wankhede Stadium or a full Farasha Kotla or Chennai when Mahindra Singh Dhoni comes out to bat or I tell you what, those partnerships between de Villiers and Kohli down in the Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bangalore. There is just nothing like it in the sport.